The public sector uses three personnel strategies, each of which is represented in a layered fashion in human resource systems. The three systems are based on first, election, second, appointment, or third, rules, composed of merit, seniority, and representativeness factors. First, election as a strategy for policymaking in personnel selection is the foundation of democratic states. The people choose who will make and execute the laws and, to some degree, who will interpret them. A second personnel strategy is appointment by elected officials. Generally, appointed officials serve at the will of those who select them. The most salient appointed officials are those who run agencies as cabinet-level secretaries, directors, and commissioners, and their chief deputies. Ideally, elected officials select individuals for full-time paid jobs who they believe are competent in addition to being in general agreement with the officials about their policy positions. Common practice used to allow elected officials to choose appointees in general government service on the spoils principle, either to reward political supporters or to indirectly enhance their own personal situations, such as through the appointment of family members without regard for competence. Such appointments still occur and sometimes produce well-publicized scandals, but the potential public relations damage and sometimes legal and electoral consequences to appointing officials and ethics laws act as restraints. A third strategy is rule-based selection, which affects the bulk of those in public service. This strategy gives precedence to merit and is based on technical qualifications and competitive selection. Removal from office is often only for cause. Advanced forms of the merit philosophy in organizations evolved in the 19th century. Two fundamental types of merit strategies exist, rank and job strategies and rank and person strategies. Rank and job personnel strategies, also known as rank and position strategies, are the norm in the United States but less common elsewhere. Rank and salary are determined by the position that one holds. Substantial salary increases and higher statuses are attained only through movement into better jobs, but multiple promotions within an organization are unusual beyond the predetermined job series. Career development is the responsibility of the incumbent, the job holder, and promotions are normally open competitions, including lateral entry from outside the organization, leading to the term open personnel system. Rank in person emphasizes the development of incumbents over time, especially within the organization, and tends to lead to closed systems. A closed personnel system provides few opportunities for lateral entry by those outside the organization. They allow for more position mobility because personnel carry their ranks with them no matter what their current assignment. Closed personnel systems typically have a strong up or out philosophy, that is, those who are not promoted eventually may be terminated. Hybrid or mixed strategies are also possible. In selected cases, public servants are appointed but serve for set terms. Examples are state public safety directors and university regents, similar to elected officials. In recent years, there's been renewed interest in linking rule-based or merit selection with termination processes similar to those in appointment strategies, in which property rights to jobs are severely limited. Although at-will employment is still the exception rather than the rule in public service.